Hello, Jess friends. This is International Master Valerie Wolf, and today we're going to be talking about the Trumpovsky attack. Now, Trumpovsky basically goes after the moves of d4, knight f6, and bishop g5, and it is one of the most, if not the most common sideline that goes within the d4, knight f6 openings. What is the main idea that you know White is trying to adopt with this? Well. There are a couple of reasons why that's played out, and the main idea being is that everything that White tries to achieve is basically connected with the plan to attack and immediately challenge Black's king side. So how does that work, actually? What what is this supposed to give or bring? There are a couple of things. Okay, so the first thing is that after bishop to the g5, should Black get to play with something like e6? Of course, White would love to control the center. And being able to control both the e4 and d4 squares is a pretty big deal. If basically those squares are put into control, everything is going to work out quite well, and it could be could be a good idea. It's just that, obviously, things have to go much smoother. So let's take a look. After the bishop to the g5, uh, Black could, could continue in many different ways. He can go e6, he can go knight to the d4, e4, he can play different kinds of moves. So that's a very good thing, obviously. So what do we say about e6? Let's begin with that type of idea. If ever you see e6 in e4, remember that he will attempt to counter you, he will attempt to challenge you in all sorts of different ways. Unfortunately, I don't believe that this is going to work, at least not in the way as it should be. So here's a good example of how this happens. For example, for instance, so after h6, white can actually capture f6, and then after to take knight c3. Now the, the real thing about this opening, and especially this line of, of thought and development, is that everything that white does should be related to his possibility to advance towards the middle. And and yes, of course, that's not going to be too easy. But the idea is that we've got the control. We're already having an opportunity, like knight f3, queen d2, and a couple other moves. So similarly, the whole, whole, whole point is that white is going to build up towards the center. He's going to build up line where all these pieces are actually going to come together and play towards black. So this is a very good this development, a very good setup of uh, pieces. Now let's talk a little bit about um, what actually matters most in this position. So after this move, <clears throat> uh, of course, white's very successful because next move you can just play with knight f3, queen d2, long side castles. But above all, it's that center. Remember that everything is because of the center. That middle of the board provides White with the beauty of his position, with really the, the major features and opportunities that seem to uh, flow in this position. <clears throat> and because of that, everything just looks terrific. So it's a, it's, it's a, nice, it's a nice, nice way of thinking. Now let's talk a little bit about what goes instead. What Black plays is with c5. And then actually after the move, pawn up to the c5. Okay, so this is like um, the major direction we could say for Black and his pieces and his development. Uh, well, of course, White can play d5. This is this is what happened in the game played between uh, Vaganyan and Koprechik. Essentially, the idea is that Black that White is now um, you know breaking in the center. <clears throat> He's actually taking the the possibility to slot in a fairly solid uh, you know pawn and he's ready to support that with as many pieces as possible right around the middle so that there could be a move like knight of the c3 and there could be more moves um, that will follow in through the beginning that's a that's a really great idea okay, so let's see what happens this <clears throat> now black plays queen b6 and now white sacks a pawn. Now this is really the beauty of this opening. That it is never about the speed unless it's about the center. The center and the speed of development are the two things that white cares about most. And he could actually make them work perfectly. 
this is what the, the whole the whole variation, the whole sequence is about. With E4 on the line, it is perfect. What black captures the pawn, does look a little safe for him to do that. But it really doesn't matter because the truth is that after, as soon as he captures it, <coughs> white can just do the move of uh, bishop to the d2. And now we're intending to not just attack the black queen, but eventually if it comes down to a3, knight b5, it's going to help to attack c7 and a3. So he's got to move back. Now this is uh, really one of the best type of positions, kinds of positions that we could talk about. Black is down. He does not develop well. He does not have the strength and he does not have the power that white is actually setting up for. But, <clears throat> nevertheless, what is so interesting is that right after queen to the b6, white can play a move e4, d6, f4. And you see, white must play incredibly quick if he is to deliver any type of tactics you know, in a given, in a given position. There is no time for slowing down or for rearranging. It's the position basically screams for intensity. Whatever white does, it has to be very intense and it has to be really quick. Now with the idea of planning playing for e5, <clears throat> it does feel like white's actually getting that type of intensity here. So uh, it's it's good. It's pretty good looking. Now with that in mind, let's take a look and see what this uh, what this happens. After this, black played g6. Not a great move, I have to admit, but, um, well, we just wanted to have something solid. That was it. That was all that he, you know, he was looking for. Simple, easy, a nice move to just bring the space that I know back to, back to black. So, um, it's good. So what's coming on next? After this, of course, white can play different types of moves, but naturally what he chose to do in this position is the move of e5 and you see it's like a gambit white has to speed everything up the more you can do it the more successful this is gonna get because if he doesn't speed it up it's just not gonna pro you know it's not gonna help him promote his, his possibilities with that in mind after e5 d x3 f x3 once black actually plays alongside this move with the uh, um, you know with with this it's like actually we have a great position. Let's take a look. Knight of three, bishop g7, and rook b1. Now would I say that the center is everything in this position for white? Yes, it is. It's, it's it looks like it cannot bring white any immediate or huge advantage, but it is the one thing that keeps ev that keeps the whole play together. White relies on the ability to protect that center to have it well covered and and strongly situated yes it's going to take some time but that shouldn't bother us because there is too much support that we there's never too much support that we can add there is a lot of qualities and uh, you know really creative ideas that that come in play here and so actually after that last move black played queen d8 and now you might want to actually think a little bit about this position because it's pretty important so white has to make a valuable decision where or how to advance or get going. It's truly very important, very good. But how to carry it on forward, where to go? This is a big question. So what should white do next? Should he attack? Should he try to, try to improve or regroup? Or should he try to just think about something more subtle? It's pretty important. Well, it was e6. Big one. This move practically breaks through the black position, <clears throat> not only by making uh, an appropriate like opening, that's what it does. It does appropriately open up the position, but also it gives us chances to play with moves like knight g5, and the, the bishop can come out, and the rest of the pieces are really in place for the for, for everything. So uh, e6. Keep that in mind. What you'd always like to be thinking about is how do I can how do I get to attack? How do I get to create different threats? E6, wonderful move. Now what about black? Well, he played F takes to the E6 for sure. He thought that this is going to help out to like stabilize and then do do everything correctly. But <clears throat> now if the F takes to the E is knight G5. 
beautiful move. If you look at this, you actually realize the danger that all the black pieces are going to have to experience or endure. It's like the attack against the E6 being, uh, uh, you know, like backed up by the by the plan of attacking, you know, with through the bishop, the bishop C4, and similar moves. It's just everything, you know, coming at coming at once against black, and and he can't deal with any of this. Knight F6, of course, stops the 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 knight takes to the E6 and kind of protects it all, or at least attempts to protect it all. But uh, who cares, really? Just the whole thing is that, uh, you know, in this position, it doesn't matter. White is already leading up. You see, this is a perfect example. I'm not saying that your opponents are going to play like that. But in order to understand the key idea of the Trumpovsky, you have to understand that everything is about energy and initiative. And so as White plays it just like that, he gets both of these. He gets a great energy and he gets an incredible amount of initiative, you know, all pushed in uh, against black in this moment. And so we have the, the Dedix to the E6 with a pretty excellent threat of Knight F7. We're getting the possibility to think about short castles if we ever need to finalize the development. So it's a, it's a pretty interesting way to go. It's simple, stable, <clears throat> and then actually uh, really good here. So black plays A6, and then of course white plays with Bishop B3. Queen A5 short castles is an idea now black could attack eventually take the the pole the bishop on b5 but we could see that the power of of every single one of white spaces we got the attack against the queen and we've got d8 as a square if the black queen goes back white's got knight d5 what we witness here is the domination of every single one of white's own pieces versus every single one of black's terrible backside forces on the down it's it's awful and you know the the worst of all is that there's really not too much that he can do it's like this is this is one of the positions in which we see uh, the damage really going against black there is nothing he can make there's no uh, a possibility for an attack or, or whatever else and white's destructive it's pretty fine and excellent actually is a is an idea now you could also realize that <clears throat> you know the, with the f6 under attack black is not able to to come in any any closer but uh, no it's beautiful so try to remember that kind of idea what you want to do most importantly is to engage to attack to threaten your opponent just like this is it going to take time to do this absolutely it will always take time that's what's good about this. We take the time to seize the day and really begin or engage those kind of challenges or threats against him. And as we do, more threats or opportunities pop into play and, and more ideas you know, are, are become are becoming even more relevant. That's a great idea. It's really, really good thinking. <clears throat> and uh, look at Black. I mean, just it's, it's down back, it's undeveloped, or like terrible almost. So, no, no chance. So, uh, what he plays along this position is, of course, short castles h6. He did not dare to take it. He wanted to just make sure that, that um, you know, basically, after that, black plays this. So, h6, queen d3. It's like breaking, basically breaking through the black position as we set up the, the the queen and we're actually just going directly for the attack. We have the f7 under threat. We've got most of the black pieces just basically down and back. And so it's like after queen takes to the f7, then, uh, I mean, after queen to the f7, it's just, it's relevant. Yeah. This is the kind of position uh, in which you see the pressure of every piece really coming and, and and ultimately making black's position convulse that's how it's supposed to go now on another hand there is a game that i want to show you or more of an exercise of a game really than rather than a full game uh, and this is a, a beautiful game that occurred between michael adams and peter leko this is a game in which Adams was actually playing white, and you could see another approach by Black, which basically suggests he could try to counterattack white. Now, why does that not work? <laughs> it doesn't work simply because after white plays f3, knight f6, and d to the c, 
White is more prepared. If you think about this, he, you know, there's nothing that black could do that is in one way or another going to direct white differently. It's just, just special space, amount, control, and opportunities, all of which are actually done and played out within the very first the, the very first few moves. This is great. Let's take a look and see what got, what comes in next. This ultimately black's got to worry because he would have to play with okay, so he's got to play with queen takes to the c5 and then e4. Now take a look at this. The structure you create as white in this opening is going to basically bring everything in the table. And I mean Seriously, that is the thing. It's like the way you develop, the way you set it together is going to have impact on the sequences, the different challenges, the tactics, and the variations. It's uh, That's why it works. Now what comes out next after the move of E4? Is there anything a black could do differently? Not so much. No, that's the whole point of it. It doesn't. Black plays G6, Queen D2. What's good is that the foundation of white's pieces, which is the ability to control the center, is already very good. And because of that foundation, the fact is that black is uh, unable to you know, make anything uh, like in terms of delivery. So after that, black plays d6, long side castles as a move. Then, of course, we're getting the idea of playing bishop g7, bishop h6 have the, uh, the plan that if black actually takes it, we've got queen takes to the h6. And then for sure, white's going to play along with h4 plus h5 or g4. And so it's, it's, it's pretty efficient. The significant setup that white actually applies is, um, you know, is what, is what this line is all about. And apparently there's going to be a lot more as, as this game progresses. So... Okay, let's take a look. <clears throat> so after this move, okay, obviously Black's got a problem. So what did what did you do? What did you actually just choose chose to play with? Um, well, after that move of Bishop H six, Black basically kept the, picked up the castle, and then after the castling, White plays H four. You see, the main reason as to why White turns out so much successful here. It is because, that's actually not not for any other reason, it is because of the support. The support and the pretty development is giving us the chance to keep up. Now there could be the H5 move and there could be so much more. If you look at black, you'll actually find out that he's down, back, and horrible in terms of development. So what's coming up next? Bishop B6. Of course, normal looking move. He's trying to keep it up to keep it together. But it doesn't even matter because white simply continues. Carries on like in a textbook. Takes, capture, g4, queen h6. Could that be so easy? Yes, it could. And it should. Now follows the move of e5, opening the route for the knight to move on to the e4, exchange blacks, and attack h7. And it's kind of amazing because there's really nothing that black can do after e5, he resigns. This is a great example of seeing what a fast development and strong pressure could do whenever you're playing this opening. It really does the job. It makes a difference.